Short on time, too many gardening jobs to get through, I won't keep you waiting any longer then. Hi, I'm Ben and here are my 10 must-try hacks that'll make life a little easier in the garden. Try them and I promise you, you'll be enjoying a brighter, more productive garden and all for a lot less effort. You can never have enough herbs in my opinion. Perennial herbs like this gorgeous thyme and rosemary will continue to yield their aromatic leaves throughout the winter. But what about fleshier herbs like say mint and basil? Simple, take cuttings and grow them on in a bright windowsill indoors in water. Remember to change out the water from time to time to keep it clean and your cuttings should remain fresh and green and good to use and they'll produce roots within about a week. And if you like, then pot them up into potting mix to grow them on or just take more cuttings until growth resumes again in spring. Rainwater is always best for watering your plants, but when this runs short, I will supplement it with the hose pipe. Trouble is with the old hose pipe is that you run the risk of flattening crops and flowers as you stretch it out to reach further parts of the garden. So if that's a problem for you, try this. Thread your hose through a hoop. These are old croquet hoops and then feed it through and water as normal. And look, there's no risk of them getting squashed at that corner. When you're done, go back and carry on up and thread it through your next hoop and then you're good to go again. Simple. Don't be in a hurry to get rid of prunings and hacked backed branches. Keep some aside, especially the thinner, twiggier stuff to use around the garden. Twiggier sticks are perfect for supporting peas. These vining plants will weave their way up into the sticks, keeping them up off the ground so they don't get nibbled or rot away the peas will be a lot easier to pick as well. Another use for sticks like this is to lay them on beds to keep cats off. No one wants them doing their business when you've just sown or planted, say, onion sets. They'll also help to obscure seedlings from pesky pigeons which might peck away at newly germinated seedlings. When you're planting your beans, pop in a few trailing nasturtiums as well. The nasturtiums will help to attract even more pollinating insects that will hopefully go on and help to pollinate your beans. The nasturtiums will also serve as a trap crop, attracting away black bean aphids, say, which will then hopefully avoid your bean plants. Later on in the season, cabbage white butterflies will often prefer to lay their eggs on nasturtium leaves. These can then be removed to an enclosed compost bin before they hatch and spread, helping your cabbage family crops to hopefully dodge an infestation. When you're sowing anything, sow a few extra into a different pot. So you've got your main seed tray or pot here and then a smaller one and grow this on in a separate, different environment. What this does is it acts as a sort of insurance policy against any losses. So if your main sowing gets damaged by pests or killed off by bad weather, you might have your insurance seedlings good to go. If you don't have the space for the extra seedlings, should they all succeed, you can always just give them away to friends and family. Who doesn't love getting some plants for free? Tools run the risk of turning rusty in damp air, so keep them oiled from time to time and nice and dry. One way is to keep a old rag handy and just give your tools a good wipe down before you go ahead and store them. And for hand tools, store them in a bucket of dry sand like this and that way they will always be ready and to hand. When it's time to get on and garden, take everything you need and pop it into a bucket along with any bits and bobs that you might need. Then when you're out gardening, once you've finished with a tool or item, pop it back in the bucket and please be disciplined with this. It's so easy to lose tools, trust me. I lost this set of pruners for about two to three months and you can kind of see why. There's quite a lot of rust on it and I'll need to give it a bit of a sort of refreshen up. But uh, in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is add some white tape to the handles to make it more clear. That way I won't miss them again. Why, oh why? Do gardening companies make tools with green handles? Madness. 
Before we move on to our next tip, I'd like to invite you to take this opportunity to give this video a muddy thumbs up and of course subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to ding that notification bell. When you're just raking up a few leaves here and there, a trusty old wheelbarrow works just fine. But what if you've got a large area to collect leaves from or you're collecting, say, spiky prunings? Well, an old bed sheet or tarpaulin comes in really handy. Just go ahead and rake your leaves onto that. By the way, if you have a tip of your own, please don't be shy about sharing it down in the comments below. I may even borrow it and share it in a future video. If you're a keen gardener, you probably have plenty of seeds. The start of the growing season is a good time to check their sow-by date. If your seeds are past that date, well, don't throw them out just so quickly. Do a germination test first. Very simple. Just take your seeds and pop them out onto a piece of damp kitchen towel like this, a double layer, and space them out nice and evenly over the surface. And then fold the paper over and pop it into some sort of lidded container that'll keep it nice and moist. You can respray during the course of the week if it does get a bit dry, but they should be fine in there. Now move this somewhere indoors, somewhere warm to germinate, and then after a week or so, check for germination. Any signs of roots or shoots count. You can then see what proportion of the seeds have germinated to get a percentage. Anything above a 50% germination rate, I would say is good to go, and you can eke your seeds out for another season. Have you ever tried to weed in hard, sun-baked ground? It's not easy, is it? Instead, it's so much easier to weed after a rainstorm or a period of sustained wet weather. This will make it so much easier to get the weeds out of the ground, complete with all of their roots. Look at this selection of my trousers. They've all got holes in the knees. Well, this time for this growing season, I've decided to invest in some kneeling pads here. You could use some sort of cushion, just something to protect your knees and stop them getting worn out. Yes, it's a little bit grannyish, but like walking poles, blankets and slippers, it just makes good plain sense. Slow to germinate seeds such as parsnips could do with being marked out so you know exactly where you've sown them and can work around them safely while you wait for them to germinate, which can take as long as sort of three weeks. Now, the traditional way to do this is to mark out your row, and then sow your seeds and then fill in with something darker like this compost here. The soil in this bed is quite dark already, so that method won't work. Instead, just use a string line. Get it nice and straight. And this allows you, of course, to get that really perfectly straight row. Sow your seeds, cover them back over, and then just leave the string line where it is until the seedlings have pushed through. And that way you can weed around them without fear of nabbing out those precious seedlings. I could rattle on all day with more tips, but I've done plenty of that in these other videos. So if you're hankering after more, why not settle down for a hacktastic catch up? I especially love the video on reusing plastic bottles. It's great when you can recycle stuff like that. I'll catch you next time.